Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out a really cool tool called Embergen. Now, this may sound familiar to you if you are a subscriber to this channel, because I literally talked about it three weeks ago when I talked about the Odin programming language. The Odin programming language was used to create Embergen, which is a uh, fluid simulation system that's mostly used to create fires, smoke, that kind of stuff. We're going to see it in just a sec, but if you want to learn more about the Odin language, uh, do check it out. It is a very cool programming language, and it was used to create Embergen. Also, so if you have no interest in the Embergen yourself, but you are using something like Blender Max Maya and you want some uh, really cool uh, volume-based samples to work from, uh, they actually have a number available up the downloads, the free VDB section here. Uh, so you can go ahead and download these, work with them in whatever tool you wish, uh, however you want. So the kind of things that we can generate using this tool, well, they have a bunch of them set up that you can go and download yourself. Some of these files are huge. So 1.7 gigabytes for this one, for example, uh, but you can import them into Blender. I'll show you how to do that in this video. But now it is time for the hands-on component. We'll come back and look at the pricing and all the rest of that stuff later on. But first here, let us go check out Embergen. Here you can see Embergen in action. This is fire being generated in real time. So actually, if you see, if I actually move this guy around, you're gonna see the simulation responds. So you see how it flips and goes. So this is real time simulation that is working here, but these end results can be exported in a couple of different formats. The way that these are ultimately generated is using this cool little node graph here. So you see over here, uh, we've got a shape uh, set it. So we got a primitive shape and a noise shape being blended together. Those are being hooked up. So that creates the source for our blend, our emitter available right here. You can pick a thing and you'll see down here the various different parameters for that node. So we can set its uh, position in the world, how much it emits. If you've used a particle system in anything, you're going to find this one is very much set up for flame based systems, but there's just a very simple setups to, to work with. You've got the initial forces on things, but you can also apply forces. So you can see a noise force is being applied to our emitter. Another noise force is here. Uh, you set up the lighting in your particular scene. You've got control over the simulation itself. As you can see, there are a number of different tabs here. So it's going to assume that your work here in combustion mode. Uh, we can switch over to the combustion tab here and generate and change how things work. So we want to change the intensity of our flames. And then again, this is all real time. So you see the immediate results of what we did right there. You can change the amount of turbulence going on. In our simulation, we can change the amount of turbulence to our smoke. Our, our smoke is being generated or not. Uh, and then you see it's all mixed out. The volume is generated this way. Now, the cool thing here is this VDB. VDB is a very open standard. So if we want to go ahead and export this out for use in another system, I can basically just drop a node off of here like this, and I can export out the VDB. So then what I'm just doing is I'm picking a location. So temp, okay, and out files. All right, so there in our temp folder, it's going to render it there. So if you want to go ahead and export these things out, you can go ahead and just do it like this. This will render it down to a VDB file, which again, if you go back to their server, that's what you're downloading from them, a number of VDBs to work from. And then using it in another system, such as what you see here in Blender, default cube, sacrificed. All right, we're going to go add, and then we go here to volumes and we're going to import an open VDB volume. This should be, there should be plugins to make this work with just about every game engine and tool out there. Go to temp. We're going to select all of the files here and then we're going to import them in like so. So now we have our volume here. I'm not sure. It never shows up exactly center, but go ahead and play it. There you go. So that is the rendered out volume. So let's go back to the beginning here. So there you can see, obviously you're gonna to have to set up the um, the coloring and the texturing so that when it's burning, it, it shows up in fire. I, I sh the, the VDB uh, settings is beyond the scope of what I'm gonna talk here, but you can easily find a couple tutorials on using uh, VDB files in your uh, content creation tool of choice. But as you see, it's easy to export out into 3D formats and use it in other platforms. Now let's say I want to instead export this out as an image or a flipbook series. Well, you see over here, export image, I can grab that guy and I can say show no details. And then we've got the option over here. I can set this thing out as a flipbook or a sequence. This flipbook in common game dev parlance would be considered a sprite sheet where they're gonna render it all to a single frame. So I'm gonna go here, we'll do that. And we will set it out as, I'll, I'll replace test. All right, so we're gonna save it as test. Go ahead and replace that and then export it out now. So this should be 64 frames, I believe. And we'll just go ahead and click export now. Okay, a small aspect of user error here. I had to connect the export out. So I got the render channel here. I export out the R, G, and B channels to our exported image like so. And now we should be able to select it again. So here, select 
and export now. And now what it'll do is go through and render each one of those individual frames. So now if we head on over to File Explorer, we'll find that guy right there. So there is the end result. It's a sprite sheet of textures. I can go ahead and I can grab this guy. So let's, let's select it, for example, go on over here. I'm gonna go into a uh, Blender project, oh, sorry, a Godot project. Head on over here to Godot. Let's open that project up and I'll show you how you can use these uh, flipbook images uh, in your game engine as a very lightweight way of doing these physics simulation or these uh, particle simulations or fluid simulations. So we got this and I wanna do an animated sprite sheet. So animated sprite 2D. All right, so we just created it. Let's go ahead and there's our animation. We're gonna create one from a sprite sheet, load in our new result. This is 64 frames. So we're gonna do eight by eight like so we're going to select all the frames and we're going to add them in let's change our frame rate so that it looks good so let's make this 30 frames per second simulation all right there we go so now we have a uh, animation system this is how easy it is to use it in the world let me just go here into the transform and we'll make that three times bigger three times bigger three times bigger all right and we'll play the animation and presto there you see. So it's that easy to use these simulations inside of your game engine. You can either export them out as volumes and use the full, like, tons and tons of detail there. Basically, kind of treat them sort of like particle systems. Or you can treat them as flipbook images like this, which is basically a series of 2D images that you can easily use in your scene. So pretty easy to get the end result out of this guy. Now let's look at a couple of the examples here. One of the cool ones, there's, there's a number that come with it. So I'm going to show you the flamethrower example. Um, I'm not going to save that. Let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. So here you can see uh, a more complex simulation going on here. So here's the various different pieces that are parts of the simulation. And what you're creating here is uh, a flamethrower, basically. So it's creating um, this cool liquid simulation. It's, it's got all of the smoke is being simulated. Everything here, if you want, you can go into any aspect of this simulation and change it up. Um, also, we can, uh, there's a couple of other options here. So the emitters here, uh, there are options for doing um, experimental versions here. You can do it with particle systems uh, or a hybrid approach. Uh, I do find that, oh, it's not in that section. Sorry, it's over here in the volume section. So over here in volume, uh, we can actually change the rendering mode. So you've got a couple different options. There's an experimental particle system and hybrid approach as well. If you'd rather work in those instead of volumes, again, they are marked as experimental. So uh, do keep that in mind. But as you see, every single one of these uh, nodes here has a drill down option available. Uh, there are a plethora of node options here. So you see here, I can do a right click and we can add in colors or colliders or so on into the scene. Another neat thing here, let me just go and show you from... Uh, base project so if you create a new project and uh, we won't save this guy what you get is this flaming donut right here i'm going to showcase another neat ability of ember gen is we can bring in our own 3d models so i'm going to go here right click and add a new node a node of type import like this and now i can basically come down here to the geometry and we're going to pick it so if i go to my downloads folder i have this uh animated file of uh a lady waving uh that will come in. So now that is hooked up. I can get rid of this guy, which is our Taurus here that is currently being used. So instead of a flaming donut, we're going to have a flaming lady in just a second. What I'm going to do is drop the animated geometry out as our input source for the emitter. And there you see. Now, what you may notice is it's kind of small. I'm just going to go down to global transforms and we're going to do a 10x scale. So we've got kind of big. All right. So here you see we have this lady being our flaming emitter for our particle system. We basically just created the human torch. You'll notice as it moves around, uh, it actually um, animates with it. So the animation and the uh, fluid simulations work together. The other cool thing here is we can actually do a mask down. So I'm gonna grab here mask one, like so, and I can say masking mode. Let's switch that out. By the way, all these things are keyable over here in the timeline. And I'm gonna switch here to the uh, skinned meshes. And then we can come in here and pick where. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick uh, looks like her right arm is the one doing the movement. So I'm going to pick the, the right hand like so. All right. And now that is masked. So we can mask it just that one instead of using this pin right here then. So I can drag that off, click. And I'm going to pick the mask one as our shape like so. And there you see the, the system is being now emitted from her hand. It looks like the smoke is coming off of a different emitter or a different setting. I would have to change that independently, but there you see, if you want to go and in the timeline, um, the 
you can mask it down to a specific location. You can also then, with that set, I can come here, we can change our emitter. So you can change how long or how quick the burst is, the amount that is emitted. Uh, so we can increase the fuel rate obsessively. So now we have a real big fire going on here. Uh, we can change the amount of smoke being emitted. Again, you can key it by using this button right here. So the percentage of smoke. So now we have a very smoky fire going on. Uh, it's a very cool system. And quite frankly, it is quite intuitive to work with. Uh, just make sure sometimes you have to set up and hook up this export image if you want to do a flip board ex flip book export and if you want to do a vdb export you do it here so basically drop that out drop that node pick a location for it pick the number of frames you wish to export and then you can go ahead and import that into your game engine of choice or wherever else again with the flip book you have the choice between doing a flip book which is a single sprite sheet or you can do it as a sequence of images uh pick the location for you save them and then you can as you saw in this example, very easily bring them into um, a game engine such as Godot, Unity, Unreal, whatever, as a se sequence of images, which will have very little overhead. Or you can bring them in uh, like we've done here. And let's go back to the very beginning. Boom. Like so, as a 3D volume in your uh, application of choice. So you have options with this guy. The other cool thing here, you may have noticed up here, this is a free trial. That free trial, you don't have to do anything. You basically give them an email address and install it. This is sadly Windows only. I guess I should have started the video with that instead of ending it with that. Uh, but if you do want to go ahead and check it out, they, there's no verification required. Literally, you just give them an email address, download it, and start playing with it. It is a very focused tool in what it does, but it does what it does very well. So if you want to do flame smoke simulation stuff uh, in real time that is what this tool is capable of uh, so if you want to learn a little bit more about it it's available at jangaeffects.com uh, in terms of that they also make another product by the way called vector ray gem uh, this appears to be more for particle systems i may cover this at some point in the future they're also working on something called fluid gen for doing water effects i don't know if that is actually going to come to uh, market or not but it's definitely in progress uh, if you're wondering in terms of what this actually costs you can find out here the pricing is very reasonable in my humble opinion uh, so you're looking at uh, 250 bucks for the suite. So you're getting both products there or for $200 slash $100. You can, so Embergen, the product we looked at today is 200 bucks at indie pricing. So indie means you make less than a million dollars a year. That is immediately perpetual. So the people that like to buy their software as opposed to rent it, well, that is what you are doing here. So you pay 200 bucks, you get it. You can use it for as long as you want. It's just after a year, you will stop getting updates. Now, if you are in a studio that makes between 1 million and 100 million, pricing goes up quite a bit actually but again if you're in a studio that makes over a million bucks those are very reasonable pricing um and then we get into enterprise which is the call us level education options available out there as well uh but if again if you want to go ahead and check it out just try it for free head on over here basically just click this that's the extent of what you've got to do that's it you can download it check it out and again if you don't want to check this one out but you want to play around with some vdb files there is this free vdb library just last month or so uh, they added a number of them in you can also uh, download them for Embergen, uh, play the rhythm that way. But if you, if you want to do volumetric clouds, fire, uh, explosion effects, and so on, uh, there are a number of generated VDB files out there. This is the exact same or the equivalent of what you got when you go ahead and export it out this way. So uh, they've created a couple for you to check out. Also, if you come here and you do do um, the download, you'll find out in the uh, samples, there are a number of of different options here. So let's do a magic liquid. So here's for more like a, oh, no, that's a liquid particle effect. Okay. Uh, so let's do another one up. File, open. Uh, let's do it to tornado. All right. Where'd you go, tornado? Tornado. All right. So here you can see using this system to simulate a tornado. Like so, and I'm assuming it's going to get some vortex effects soon, start spinning. And yeah, so it gives you an idea of the type of capabilities that you can do uh, with Ember Genesis. Again, it's not just for creating fire, but obviously fire, explosion, smoke, that kind of stuff is the most obvious first use. But you can see here you can use it for liquid simulations, tornadoes, etc. And here you can see the node network that went together to create this guy. Uh, it's... Uh, I recommend just grab it, play with it. You're going to find it's a quite an intuitive program to work with. Again, if you do want to export out the VDB, 
or the image version. You're going to have to wire them in somewhere in the line, uh, but that's really about the extent of it. The trial version that you are seeing is fully uh, featured. There, there's no limitations to it at all. Uh, it's a cool program for sure. Once again, available at Jenga Effects, and this is written using the Odin programming language, uh, and that, again, I covered recently. So if you want to learn a little bit more about a cool alternative programming language, uh, which, as you can see from this example, has been used in real-world production software. Do check that out as well. I will link that uh, in the linked article down below as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Embergen, uh, a very cool fluid simulation program. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.